Good morning. What's up, everyone? Can you hear me? <clears throat> Let me know in chat, please. If you're one of my Wolfpack people who are using the YouTube chat this morning, questions and comments. Let me know if you can hear me. Beautiful. Where's everyone joining from today? Always love hearing it. It's kind of crazy where the traders kind of convened from on YouTube. It blows my mind. And even just some of the pack people we've got overseas is pretty cool to see. It's pretty amazing. Plans on throwing some boot camps overseas at some point. Maybe not this year, but certainly 2025 kind of depends on the family situation. Tons of Canadian traders always. South Africa, Costa Rica, Germany, nice. Australia, Greece. I've never been. always wanted to go to Greece. Chop, formerly known as Jazz. Nice, nice, nice. London, all right, all right. Well, welcome to everyone, no matter where you're from. Uh, if this is your first time joining me, welcome. We're going to do some really quick pre-market process here, all right? No nonsense, no BS. Most of what I see out there, a lot of BS going on, all right? In this market, it's so easy to BS. I can't even, when we have markets hitting all time highs, when we have, you know, stocks, when we have stocks going absolutely berserk, breaking out and stuff like that, super easy to, to catch a nice trade and then cherry pick and put it out there and, you know, try to sucker people. So it's it's an amazing market, in other words, but it's also kind of sucks out there, in my opinion, because most of what's being taught out there, at least when, when my realm, I can't speak for any other realm. Well, I can. I watch Forex. I watch Futures. I watch all the influencers in our space, which is getting progressively worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Okay, the marketers are getting worse the influencers are getting worse in terms of their tactics and and it's all good because at the end of the day, a bunch of new traders, right? And if you guys know anything about our channel, if you know anything about what I teach and if you know anything about my trading, you know that only makes it better for the better traders, okay? So we can all bitch about all the scams and all this and that. I don't bitch about any of that. I understand that the stocks that I trade themselves are the biggest scam that I have to be concerned with. I have to be what's I have to be concerned with what is going on in small cap. I have to be what concerned with what is going on with my strategies and the macros in my realm. Okay? Screw whatever screw what's going on everywhere else. I keep eyes just to see, you know? I keep eyes just to see. But in terms of What's important? What's important is that I have a thorough understanding of what I am trading, regardless of what it is. Most people don't, right? So we have a ton, a ton of noobs. We have a ton of noobs right now, y'all. Some of you are new who are watching me. That's beautiful. I'm so glad you're here, all right? Um, hopefully, if you guys get some value this morning, drop a like, drop a subscribe. That's all I'm asking for. Um, and so we can try to get the word out of some better ideas to some people, at least. I know it's working for my students. Okay. That being said, that being said, it is an amazing market. It is an amazing market. But for those who, so for example, there are a lot of people right now. Okay. There are a ton of people right now who have a ton of FOMO from previous markets, for example. Okay. We've got a ton of people who back during this run, okay, to these previous highs, which we're breaking, break, breaking out of at the moment. So much FOMO, okay? Really terrible 2022. You can see this holding pattern in 2022. Now we're getting back to it, right? So now everyone who had that FOMO got screwed over here, had to go get their jobs back in the uh, subsequent two years. And for those who don't think, who are like, what are you talking about? COVID, everyone quit their fucking jobs or got fired or was forced to be at home. A lot of those people still work from home. 
government checks were getting sent out, right? The stimmies, they went straight into the markets and product bags pretty much, right? It's known, it's a fact by now. The people who made money in 2022, I'm sorry, 2021, 2022, lost that. Between then and now, a lot of those people, most of those people had to get their jobs back and stuff like that. I know, I was teaching a lot of them. And, I and now I teach the ones that stuck around and are just now trying to figure out how to learn how to trade because they realize things don't go straight up forever. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on, right? So it's an amazing market, okay? That being said, if you're still chasing, if you're still just being Billy, like we like to call him and her, you're still losing or getting very lucky or creating terrible trading habits, okay? That are not gonna sustain you. This is the best profession possible in terms of if you are trying to leave a nine to five, if you hate your job, you know, it really is. If you're able to get a grasp of it, the problem is most people aren't. They're going to come in. The one thing I want you to know before we get started on these tickers, everything specifically in small cap is set up to take all your money long and short these days, right? Whether you're short selling, whether you're long at some point, everything's designed to take your money. Okay. If you're investing in small cap, they're going to take your money. If you over your stay, you're welcome. They're going to take your money. If you're buying through highs of day, consistently if you're buying breakouts consistently they're going to steal your fucking money this is how it works in small cap and then and then everyone's like it's a scam it is but you're an idiot because you never learned what the scam was in the first place once you understand the scam but then you understand the beauty of look at this 200 percent. this has been every single day this is a small percent gainer recently right you can never run a test let me know in chat it's been wild but with that wildness also comes so much danger. These stocks, but look, there's no Chinese stocks on my scan this morning. So they're all probably gapping down. So if we if we mess with my filters quickly, um, let me take off my percent gain filter and then filter uh, down and then let's go to the percent losers. Let's see what's down there. Probably some of the plays from last week, right? FLJ Chinese, TIRX Chinese. Uh, Sien was a bankruptcy bounce that we, I'm going to put that video up at some point that very frustrating, but an amazing bankruptcy bounce last week. If you don't know what that is, I'll be putting that strategy out pretty soon for y'all. Um, Tanage Chinese, JTAI, AI from last week, Licken, L-I-C-N, Chinese, ELWS, not sure if that's Chinese, but H2, CHNR, Chinese, CPOP, Chinese. So all what I'm trying to say, all of the plays that were up a lot last week are now the top percent losers this week so far. So, and now we're getting into nuances of scanning and what we look for. There's no magic in the scan. It's in the operator. It's in the eyes looking at the scan. It's in the experience. What kind of experience do you have to understand what's happening? I look at my scan through a macro lens first, okay? I look at my scan for patterns. And I've been doing this for a very long time. Always looking for what can run next, looking for hot sectors, um, looking for whatever information that I need to pull off of it to get my attention to the right stocks day by day by day. Going long, short selling, two totally different things. Way, way more in my eyes, creativity and foresight is necessary when you're trying to buy these things they're pieces of shit but they're pieces of shit with like rockets stuffed in them <laughs> they can fly right does that make sense smash the like if you understand what i'm trying to say they're super dangerous they're dog shit they're terrible to buy they're not good stocks they're not good investments most investment advisors are not even allowed to touch stocks under five dollars for their clients do you understand rocket turds i love it get rockets exactly flying Scheiser, all of these things right so why are you guys and gals chasing these things right i can understand if you got like a shit fetish or something like that a poopy fetish <laughs> sorry this is getting weird we get weird sometimes but um you know what I'm saying? It's These are terrible, terrible stocks, okay? So let's start with them, right? I agree it's up. And this is a perfect example of just how bad they are. I love that this is the one that's that's our top percent gainer this morning. Let me get to it.
Y'all understand what I'm trying to say this morning? Why do you chase this stuff? Why are you buying through high a day? Why are you buying it high? Why are you buying them when they go to one to 10? That's the game. The game is then to scam you. You buy it, it goes down, they dump. Because guess what? Any of these stocks that go one to 10, any of them that go from five cents or 10 cents to a dollar or two dollars or three dollars, no matter what, 99.99% of the time in small cap, they're dumping shares on you there. And in other words, supply and demand shifts. So, and that is their goal is to get it there, to fuck the sheep, to screw their investors, not to help you guys out. You know what I'm saying? It puts money in their pockets and it puts money in the pockets of really big institutional investor banks. Does that make sense, everyone? Let me know in chat, please. It's just, this is so much more important than just like trying to give you guys what's gonna run today right now, which we're gonna talk about too here in one second, right? Let me know in chat, please, or I'm not gonna talk about any tickers whatsoever. Understand that first. That's the first thing you have to fucking understand about this. No one teaches that. No one lets you understand that that's what's actually going on. And that's why my students and what we've got going on is, you know, the ability at times to predict that, uh, predict PRs on several of the setups. We're actually getting in stocks before the news comes out, which is a super powerful scenario based on this. Have you ever heard the term sell the news? That's what this comes from. But it's abstract for you. You're like, oh, I sold the news only. In no, not only institutional investors. Small caps predictable. These stocks, look at the life cycle of them. Okay. And I'm going to do what I'm going to I'm going to put some more. If you guys would like and gals would like, I'll put some more information out there. Because I find there to be the most edge in terms of any longs possible in small cap still, especially right now. My my scanner every single day no matter what top percent gainers they're not big cap stocks they can't move like this they can't their floats are too big too many shares to be traded to move that that's the whole point big cap stocks big market caps big floats so that they don't move a lot so if something happens the company doesn't lose their value overnight what we trade, any of these companies, because the share count's so small, they can lose all their value overnight when they say they're bankrupt or they're getting delisted or any of that stuff, okay? AGRI is a perfect example. They just did a split. They did a split because they were trading under a dollar. If you're new, I'm sorry. If you're with me, you already understand this, but I have to reiterate because right now we're on YouTube and this is where most of the new traders are that we're trying to reach, Okay. And they need to learn this shit, right? Or you're going to get slaughtered every fucking day. And you're not going to know why. And in this market, those few unicorns that you might try to hit are the ones that you go see one to a, you know, a thousand percent on the day. Going to put the worst images in your head of what you're supposed to be doing and what these stocks are, which are crappy. Okay. <clears throat> so our top percent gainer, Agri, this morning, they did a split recently because they were trading under a dollar for long enough. They're going to get delisted by NASDAQ. They want to stay on NASDAQ or they're done. Right, they go to OTC and die because OTCs are dead. Maybe never coming back. Okay. So they did a one for sorry, get it up. They did a one for fifty reverse split. So um just a few months ago, their price was trading at fifty times lower. Okay, lower than three. You have to divide three by fifty, and their share count was fifty times higher. 50x their share count whatever their share count is now my scan says it's 1.2 so it's like 50 60 something right million shares and the price was 10 cents or whatever but look what they did so they did uh they didn't really pump they had one big day where they went from 80 cents to a buck 80 they dumped into that they gapped spiked and dumped obviously all the way back down to 60 cents y'all on 40 million share, over 40 million, 50 million, okay? All the way back down to 20 cents, dumping. This is a perfect example of what you need to understand. And we've only got 13 minutes left, so I'm gonna go as fast as I can through process, which is good for you to see, okay? Normally, I like to spend way more time and um, the pre-market preps I've been doing with my pack has been, have been um, what time have we been starting? We've been starting early. You know, I've been doing like two hour, three hour webinars because we've been starting pre-market early because it's been getting crazy during pre-market.
break it down. It's not to say that shit can't run. Today they ran agri, okay? And right now we have people, we have gurus, we have all those people who push this shit through highs and say buy highs and buy, buy, buy. All of those people are pumping really hard right now. We'll see if the break, like if this week changes. I know that the Chinese stocks are off my skin out of nowhere, right? And that's what you have to understand. They come and go. But if this market's anything like 2020, 2021, we are going to see that what you just saw happen with the Chinese stocks, which is the craziest shit you've ever seen, flow somewhere. The question is, where is that somewhere? Does that make sense? That's what I'm trying to find. Where is that somewhere? Always. Okay. Like, what's that? MNPR for some reason. We're getting a little spiking in. Bottom bouncer. A 30 cent stock, right? Like 30 already, right? Look where it's gapping to right now. Just taking out what we're seeing this week and last week and the week before is some of these lower price stocks just taking out a whole year of action. And what I believe we're seeing is also people coming in. You know, we've got like, just all the people right now, right? Wall Street, but the apes have to be back. Who's an ape? Let me know. Please let me know in chat if you're an, an ex-ape at least. Maybe you're still an ape. Please don't stop being. But if you're an ex-ape and you're here, let me know. I don't mind it. I love it. I love seeing that. I love. I mean, again, all the garbage that's going on in terms of the social media influencing. And the problem is, is that these people are just stealing money. They don't like, there's courses on how to be, how to be a, stock influencer now like courses on how to make courses you know what i'm trying to say i'm like this is getting out of control it's like a russian doll situation you know what i'm saying if you don't know what a russian doll is google it i don't know if it's safe for work to google that but if it's the one i'm thinking of it's safe um that being said it's bad right but new traders is fine right? The more idiots we get to trade with and against, the better the moves that they make for us is how I like to look at it. If you have edge, it's only being magnified in this market, to me at least. If you've got edge as a short seller, it's only being magnified because all the short sellers were making money in 2022 and most of 2023, okay? All of them. 2023 was a little bit more crazy, but this year's truly showing who has edge and who doesn't and I don't know why you wouldn't be long in stocks if, you, if, if I were a short seller in this market or at least trying to learn, you know? Okay, sorry guys and gals. We only have 10 minutes now, so. Ooh, baboons, okay. Got a few apes. Got a few, all right. All right, all right. I mean, there's no, I'm lucky. I got into trading in what, 2015 is when I started getting interested in it. Started trading in 2016. So I'm just fortunate that I had gotten a few years under my belt before that market hit. And I understood what trading is and is not, you know? Okay. Agri, like I said, I know they're dirty dumpster dogs. It's not to say they can't run in this market. We're going to see. We're going to see. It's been a long weekend. We'll see what, what, um, what they make of it. I'm, I'm looking at just a few basic areas on this chart, right? And the MO for me on dumpy crap dump stocks where I know that they're going to be exercising shares, they're going to be dumping shares, and there's going to be some issues with supply and demand, all right, at the end of the day is what's going to happen. I'm looking at these lower levels when I can, if that makes sense. We don't have too much time. Damn. We are going to be starting next week's pre-market prep earlier. That's my plan for sure. Like I've been doing with my students because I do this every day with uh, the pack. If anyone does want, it's a sp where I I haven't released a lot of stuff yet, but we're going to be. Um, and if some people will come around. We've had some crazy things going on with students with people in the pack right now in terms of um, what they've been able to finally do with this market after being with me for a while. And it's, it's fantastic. I'll 
we'll kind of show you. But um, rwtrades.com, I do pre-market prep every single morning and then live trade, which we're going to do after this um, until I'm done trading. And then one-on-ones in the midday and then power hour prep when I can. And it's all put on the site that day. So trader therapy on Fridays, boot camps. Um, for those who wanted to come see me in person, we did release, we released um, OC slash LA and we released NYC and Nashville, I think, but I think Nashville's booked. So that's it for the first half of the year. We're gonna be doing a few of those, all right? Just to let you guys know. Okay. We're running the coupon, that coupon code. Yeah, we're running that coupon code um, through Sunday, I believe, this Sunday, upcoming Sunday, one more week, and then we're pulling it. Okay. So my MO on the really dumpy stocks like Agri is kind of these last levels. I'd have to get a really good level and then just play bounce towards VWAP and stuff like that. Idea from a risk reward standpoint. You know, the trades for me on these really crappy ones would have to look something like this, you know, with my first target being VWAP. All right. So this sort of area, 30, 40 cent area and get a bounce. And, and the idea of that is just, we get we have a, quite a few short sellers probably um, shortening the ones that may want to cover and just kind of finish covering up. That'd be the idea for me. And, or if it's re, if it pops, right, and it gets re-hit at, at a buck or something like that. The long for me, I just have a hard time long and trash like this that badly once it's already gone from 10 cents to a buck 30, if that makes sense. It doesn't mean it can't run. But if this thing does spike at all, it's going to halt, right? If this thing does spike 10, 15, 20 cents, it's going to halt. Let's check really quick. Let's see how much time we have. Five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, we can check really fast, I suppose. Hold on. Let's check the fundamentals really fast. Hold on. High risk. This is dilutiontracker.com, by the way. This is what I use now. I don't go have to go through the filings. Sometimes I still do. Sometimes I still do. But this is way faster. All right. Way faster. Thanks. Coupon codes crush 2024. Correct. Crush 2024. That goes for all the memberships. I don't know if it goes for the boot camps or not, but I don't think it does. Okay. High risk. Their ability is low, probably because they're a shelf, a baby shelf or something like that. High overhead supply right now. High cash need. We know they need cash. Look, here's their convertible note. That's what I was mentioning. They've got 20 million shares or so there. 2.76 in warrants and a small amount left on their ATM. They've got... Uh, Less than a month left of cash based on their filings, right? They've got 90 cent exercisable. They've got warrants nine exercisable at 90 cents, which they just, which they just hit 90 cents. So we know those 2.6 million shares, uh, um, those warrants, those are exercisable. Okay, that just happened. So I know 2.6 technically. Someone's got 2.6 million shares to dump on the stock. Does that make sense? Oh, it does. It's super important. This is supply and demand, which governs what we do. Every every candle that you that you see, that's what you're seeing. Okay. We've got a convertible note here. Also, 90 cent conversion price, full ratchet protection, which means that if they do an offering at a lower price, these convertible these shares also get converted to lower. Right, So they can actually dilute more shares at lower prices, which they love because then they end up with more shares at low prices they dump, right? You have 2 million, 5 million, 10 million, 20 million, 50 million shares at 10 cents of a stock, 15 cents on a stock, 20 cents on a stock, they're gonna dump it, okay? So right now, not only that, they've also got those 20 million shares that they can, that they can also convert and dump. All right. So for me, now I know it's, you know, for sure, I'm just, if anything, and I've got nothing else for the day, I can probably not trade it, first of all, or I'm looking for something really, I need to let it shake, shake, shake. All right. 
shake and shake. Leave it alone, most likely. Uh, two damn minutes till damn market open, y'all. MNPR is just a rocket already, right? 30 cents to a buck 40. No matter what, it's good. this one's going to halt out the gate. What is going on? This is important. 300% gainer. 5.8 float. Huh, okay. And their news is clearance to proceed with first inhuman phase one trial. That's not e of an advanced cancer. It's not even a great catalyst, right? For the biotech sec section. It's a 40 cent stock. It's a biotech that put out news and they're gabbing to the ones, all right? So in my mind, I say, all right, I have to, I'm not gonna chase this stuff. We'll see how this shakes out. But I have to take note. Maybe we're shifting right now. And this is so important, y'all. And please smash the like if you understand this. And if you don't, it's all right. You'll get there. I might only be looking at biotechs this week. It might have shifted just like that. My mind, I'm like, maybe I'm, oh, no more Chinese stocks are capping down. Maybe I'm only looking at biotechs this week. Does that make sense? This is how your mind has to work. It has to work like that. If you're going to be doing what I tried to do and what I've done successfully over the years and now what I'm trying to transmit to other people and how to do this, okay? Does that make sense? Markets are opening uh, in 30 seconds. I'm going to give you two more minutes just to look at the the next few tickers because we did not get through hardly any tickers i don't place trades generally speaking within the first 10 minutes anyways most of my setups revolve around 10 15 20 30 minutes or longer anyways in terms of when i'm placing these trades so um nnpr again has recently traded big bigger volume 55 million shares gapped up and got smizzacked smacked hard which means I have to do a quick check. They're going to get halted anyway, so that would give me time as the markets, I think, are just opened. Right? They're halted already. See? They're not even going to trade. Um, ACB did a split today. Cannabis, right? Is that what that is? Looks like a fresh split or something. Next percent gainer is meds. They halted up too. So meds is a micro flow, it looks like, right? These guys were pushing on Friday, I believe. I don't I won't trade that. Agri. Pulled out the gate. See if it's 50 cents is generally decently key, just like a buck, a buck fifty. 2 250 all that good stuff um bfri give it a sh look real fast look at their catalyst private placement restructuring of supply agreement with biofrontera ag not the best catalyst some higher lows going on some higher lows going on maybe they can claim a buck let's see if they hold a buck something like that but low volume for now I have to check their filings real quick on DT2. Recently broke down under a buck for the first time. So maybe they're trying to hold a buck now. We're seeing that too. The buck hold ideas off the higher priced sub dollar stocks, right? That makes sense. So I'm watching those. <clears throat> stocks like Sound. I have a few thousand of Sound. Soundhound. We'll see if AI can continue. A little breakout going on there um nvidia down but soundhound up again and off that nvidia investment i only have two thousand shares unfortunately but i had to do some things so uh qbts is up again as well they're pulling kind of hard i took most of my prof i only have a thousand shares left there from like a buck on sub a buck 90 cents on qbts at the moment so i'll continue to monitor that um, we'll see. We're going to see what the markets bring this week, all right? We'll see what the markets bring this week. Just understand, things might be shifting. Don't be stupid. Don't chase highs. If all you got, if all your gurus got is buy it through highs, you need to move, right? Give the pack a shot. It's pretty much the best place to be in small cap right now, in my opinion. And 
And I don't say stuff like that lightly. You know, I've been in the game for a long time. I've just, from what I'm seeing and, and I'm going to be putting out soon, you know, over the next few weeks and you'll, you'll see for yourself. So I got to get to my people. All right. I got to get to my people. So we're going live on in the main stock. Uh, where is it? Yeah. The main. Huh? Let's see. Yeah. The, the stage, the main stage. So if you're a pack member, I'll catch you over there. Um, yeah. If not, welcome. Thank you for joining me this morning. If it's your first time joining. Uh, again, we're going to start earlier next week because I always feel, at least on YouTube, like I'm running out of time. Um, to get through what I want to get to, especially in markets like this. We are putting more video lessons out on YouTube as well and got a bunch of exciting things going on. So thank you guys so much for joining today. It's good to be back in the swing of things finally. Last week was my first week back after dealing with all that stuff with my pops. Um, and and we're full steam ahead now. So you guys will see me here every single week. Uh, boot camps, we're running live. Back to daily webinars, back to daily one-on-ones with my people. And just trying to provide as much fucking value as I can for this community over the next year. See what we can't do. Because this truly is one of those markets. Truly, truly, truly one of those life-changing markets. If you've been doing or you're willing to do the correct amounts of work. And you're learning from the right people in the right places. Right? If not, it's going to be one of those years where you look back again and be like, fuck, I missed that market again. And I don't. That's what I'm really trying to avoid for myself. Right? I don't like missing hot markets at all. So my number one goal right now is just trade as hard as I can. Number two is do that live the whole time for my people so I can transmit it as fast as I fucking can. That's the goal. And it's working. So uh, to my wolves, I'll see you over in chat. To all my people who are not, thanks for joining. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys next week. And uh, just keep an eye out for the YouTubes this week. Peace.